You can use pretty much any picture as the background of your web page. Um, I'm going to look here at the picture of the day to day is this Union Pacific train and I'm just going to um, click on it until I get to the largest file and then I'll right click or control click and save my image and put it inside my chapter 2 folder. Chapter 2 is on my desktop and I'm just going to call this train, make this a little easier. And let's take a view of train in Photoshop. So command O to open and I'll open that train. Now if I look inside image size I can see that uh, this downloaded image is really large. It has a file resolution of 300 dpi uh, which is uh, closer to a printing resolution than a web resolution and it has a lot of, it's gigantic, it's 300 or 3776 pixels wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uncheck resample image and I'm going to set the resolution for the web. So I'll set it at 72. Then I will recheck resample image and now it's safe for me to downsample. Now most of the time we're going to design for a dimension of 960 pixels wide, but that doesn't mean that that's as large as the web browser might be stretched. People have you know, pretty large monitors sometimes um, and some people are looking at a web page on their iPhone or their smartphone. So um, you really can't know how large someone's monitor is going to be. If you're thinking about a background image that's going to stretch across an entire you know, web page, um, then you might need to work with a, a pretty large image. This is also going to be a large file size in terms of downloading time, so you want to be very careful about this. Having said all that, I'm going to go ahead and make this pretty big. I'm going to make it 1220 pixels wide. Um, and uh, then I will, you know, I can zoom in, command plus sign a couple times to zoom in just to see what my image looks like. And I'm also going to decide that um, I would. I mostly want this to be kind of white and then I'm going to kind of gray out or mute out uh, the train. So since this darker area down here will just get in the way of reading on the page with my crop tool, I'll just, I'll just move that bottom crop up quite a bit and then I'll confirm that crop. Now there's a lot of ways to mute the coloring on the, on the um, image. Um, and also to maybe dim it or make it so that type will be legible on top of this. I'm going to do this with levels. So this is a, maybe a different way than what's in the book. But with my levels adjustment layer, I'm just going to bring the shadow areas, the very, very, very dark areas, way, way, way over towards the highlights. And you can see as I do that, my image um, kind of gets a lot more muted. My dark areas disappear. I could also bring my whites down um, a little bit. And I mean, this is actually really drastic what I'm doing, uh, but ultimately the idea is we want to be able to read this, you know, read whatever's on top of this on the page. So I'm kind of thinking of this more as just a graphic that sits in the background. If I undo my levels adjustment layer and redo it, you can see the differences. Now I would save this file as my in my native format as a Photoshop file. And then I would also choose File Save for Web and um, save it as a JPEG. Um, you know, you can, tr you can see if I go all the way to the maximum quality and then if I reduce the quality um, greatly, I'm not seeing too much of a difference in my, in my image, my image quality, um, which is great. My file is 41 kilobytes at a medium JPEG. So it's, it's a pretty large file. 41 kilobytes on the web, is, it's a, that's a pretty big file size. Um, certainly, if you were downloading this on your phone, you would not be happy with 41 kilobytes. So, you know, you can't go too low. I could try bringing the quality down even more. Um, you just, you do want to uphold quality in terms of your image, what your image looks like. So you don't want to see pixelization, and I'm starting to see that over in this area. So I'm going to leave this on sort of medium quality uh, at 50 there, and then I'll save this. I'm going to save it as train-bg in my folder. Now if I go to Dreamweaver and I make a new file and I'll just call this train. Let's go ahead and save as. We'll call this index.html. We'll put it in the chapter 2 folder. I could choose, um, for a background image, I'm going to choose modify page properties. So if I were just inserting the image on the page, 
I would choose insert image and you'll see if I insert this gigantic um, background image it's going to be really large. If I go to view this in a web browser, um, I have a pretty large image. Now I, I have a pretty big monitor, so on my screen I'm actually seeing the, the image in my browser. If I um, would put this in, now, now if, this is, if this is content in my document, then the next place I can put text is going to be way after you know, the next line would be here. So if I save that and just go view that, I just pressed Command S, and here I'll press Command R, and you'll see, you know, that's not very um, user friendly. So um, instead of placing the image in the document with the image source tag as an embedded piece of content, I'm gonna just press the delete key to delete that, and I'll um, actually I'll just leave this as is. Um, I'll choose modify page properties, and inside page properties. I can go ahead and browse for my background image and in this case I'm going to say no repeat because I don't want to see tiling um, and then I'll press OK. Now if I go and view this, now I can see the train is a background image um, and I can have content on top of it. Um, so this makes more sense for such a gigantic image. Um, it would also probably be a good idea to try to maybe get a background a background color that more closely resonates with what's going on back here. Now because because I muted the color so much, I sort of compressed the range, the tonal range. So I have a gray that's out there um, that I just picked up. All I did was click background color and then with my eyedropper I chose a gray from the image itself and I'll press OK now and I'll go take a look at this. Okay, that's a little bit better. It's not a perfect match, but it certainly is better than seeing white over there in the space. Um, and you might even play with instead of um, gray, maybe you'd pick up that yellow, which I'm gonna it's gonna be kind of hard to see because I can't reach all the way over there with my screen. But um, let's try maybe this kind of something in this area. It's a little hard to see. Okay. So um, the background image, you know, hopefully what you understand is the difference is the background image allows you to put content in your document on top of the background. Um, an inserted image is content on the page, and that is going to be part of the page flow.